Hey folks, it's Art Wolf. We have another Inside the Box special today. This is a buddy Inside the Box. Uh, he has managed to get his hands on a nice conditioned copy of The Fall of France. This is a Europa series game from Game Designers Workshop. And I would tell you what the date is on the back of the box, but it's so old that there's no back of the box. It's a blank box bottom. Um, this is in really good shape. A uh, little bit of bowing, a little bit of scuffing, but all the corners are intact. Um, I have not actually looked into the inside this thing until right now, but the box is nice. There were two um, versions of this from GDW, um, one of which was in this sort of old-style Europa box, and the other of which was in that grid-style box, which I actually like a great deal. Um, this is the first of those two editions. The second version was in a box that was twice as thick as this, too. It was the same size box as the, uh, as the um, uh, Fire in the East. So here's the eastern, western, sorry, France map. Um, we can see Paris on this map. Very plain, right? This thing is dated 1981. Um, here's Normandy up here. Here's the, the Cotentin Peninsula. Um, you can see that's the standard Europa scale. And actually, of course, we have um, the bottom of Britain on, on here as well with a little bit of London showing up. Um, here is the Eastern France and the Low Countries map. And this actually goes all the way as far east as Berlin. and as far south as northern Italy. Now, hilariously, I managed to find on my own, on eBay, a full set of these maps. But mine, I'm gonna show you this. Here's Normandy, and this is the Fall of France map. This is the later map out of Second Front. And you can see there's a lot of differences here. There's more roads on the Second Front map. These, those lines are railroads, by the way. Um, there are some kind of zone demarcation lines, which I don't remember what those were. And somebody was kind enough to doodle on this one for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, but these are mine. Uh, but you can see there's a lot of differences in these maps. There's even, you know, differences in the size of the cities, right? So uh, Tour, for example, is a black dot city on the second front map, but a white dot city, an empty dot city um, on the Fall of France map. So that was interesting. Fortunately, I didn't pay a, a lot for these Doodle Don maps. Um, so they did make changes to these maps. I mean, remember that one of these campaigns is in 1940, and the other one starts in 1944. So some of the changes can probably be explained by considering that, but uh, not all of them, I don't think. All right, so we get a whole pack of stuff here. I want to be careful with it because it's all in really what appears to be untouched condition. It's all three-hole punched, too, which is, you know, an idiosyncrasy that GDW felt that people wanted that back in the day. Here's the ad for the Grenadier magazine. Here's a GDW catalog request card. Don't send that back now. Here is two sheets of errata. There's probably more errata than that. So here is the order of battle stuff. And this is, these are kind of like stuck with that, with that weird stuff. The back, this back piece is heavier than the rest of the booklet. The rest of the booklet looks like it's 18 pages of order of battle information. That does in fact look like the case. I have relatively low confidence in Europa's ability to handle this campaign, to be completely honest. Um, without sort of fudging the numbers to make the French incompetent. Okay, rules amount to 26 pages, which a couple of which are not really rules anymore. Um, so you can see that Europa was kind of starting to creep up a little bit in, in rules page count. And then the all, whole rest of this is uh, a pad of much heavier um, play aids and displays. Um, that you're clearly intended to pull this apart and then put the um, put the whole thing in a three ring binder, which I which I think is weird, but they, they they thought it was a good idea. Okay, so I take this color to be Luftwaffe. Uh, that absolutely appears to be the case, and that's definitely Waffen SS. Um, we have other than this half counter sheet, we have what looks like seven counter sheets, so eight counter sheets, so quite a lot. Um, and these are the sort of oddball, very few companies 
that weren't printing from the same printer as GDW used a letter format for layout for um, counter sheets, but GDW did. Um, so here's some French. Here's some more French. Uh, presumably these guys in the white text are something different. I don't know what those might be. They could be reserves or they could be colonials. Either one is possible and I, both would be on brand for Europa. Um, here's the French Air Force. Quite a lot of planes here. Um, these are not in a different color than the rest of the uh, order of battle, unlike the Germans and the Italians um, and the Commonwealth, which is an interesting choice. It, they're also black type on pretty dark blue counters. On these counters that, that are represent the land units, I think they're fairly readable. These counters on the, 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 the air counters are, I, th I think, going to be pretty difficult to read. Um, not sure what these guys are. They could be poles, although I don't know that. Uh, these could be more colonials for all I know. Now you'll notice there's a difference, right? These guys have black unit symbols and white factors, where these guys have white unit symbols and white factors. They're going to be somebody different. There'll be a, a, a key somewhere to tell you what those are. But I'm not trying to I'm not gonna try to pull the game apart to, to do that. So we have let's see if I'm right about this. I take the orange to be Dutch. That absolutely appears to be the case, and orange is the traditional color for the Dutch in war games, and this dark green, um, which I take to be Belgian. The Belgians don't have really a standard color in war games. Their flag has black on it, but nobody uses black for the Belgians, or very few games anyway. Um, here are Luftwaffe, Commonwealth, then these guys, once again, I suspect these to be poles, but that might or might not be true. I don't know what else they would be. Um, there's a German aircraft here, an ME-109, so I'm not sure. And then you've got two pages of Germans. And it looks like you've got some Italians here, too. Those are Italians. Um, so a whole lot of Germans with let's see what their factors look like six six infantry that's pretty good movement for infantry although it's pretty much average for europa for germans anyway and then your french infantry divisions are mainline infantry divisions are four sixes a few six sixes so maybe my concerns about uh simulating this campaign in the europa system are are not valid that is possible in the meantime, however, we have looked into a very nice co condition copy of the fall of France from DDW in 1981. Um, classic Roger McGowan cover, by the way, um, back when Roger was doing covers for these, and before Europa went to the sort of grid covers that I liked a lot. I, I liked the grid covers better, but I liked them better because they're uniform and they represent they're like of a piece. Um, whereas this is a really nice cover, but it doesn't fit graphically with most of the rest in the series that they did later. Um, so there's that minor complaint. Uh, in the meantime, it's a, it's a very interesting historical artifact, the fall of France from Game Designers Workshop. Hopefully you've found this interesting. If so, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to help support our Wolf Slayer, please do check out the links in the video description to the Ko-Fi, the merch store, and the Patreon. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, happy wargaming. gaming.